Welcome to the second part of the demonstration videos for Bookshelf, an ebook reader for the iPhone and iPod Touch. My name is Zach Bedell. I'm the author of Bookshelf. In this section, I'm going to show you how to use Shelf Server, which is the computer side of the Bookshelf system. This is what actually allows you to download your own books onto your computer uh, over your Wi Fi network. And so you can see kind of a window here on the iPhoneBookshelf.com website. As soon as you've downloaded Bookshelf, you need to come to this website and you can actually download and launch the Shelf Server program using Java Web Start. Uh, and you do that by clicking right on this link. Your browser will probably prompt you if you want to open this or save this. You should go ahead and say open. If it just saves it, you'll need to go to your wherever your downloads folder is, double click on the file to open it. And the file itself will be shelfserver.jnlp. In order for this to work, you'll need a Java runtime installed on your computer, uh, at least Java 5. Java 6 works fine as well. If you're using a Macintosh, it's already there. If you're using Windows, you can go to java.sun.com to download an appropriate JVM. Uh, just go for the latest one. There's no reason to install 5. Specifically, 6 is your best bet. But if you do have 5 installed, it'll work fine with that. So I'll open this file. And you'll see it's probably going to zip by very quickly because I've already downloaded it. There was the JNLP process that downloaded all of the different jar files you need for this application and saved them on my computer and then launched the application. If it was the first time, unfortunately, I couldn't show you this, uh, the very first time you launch the application, it'll warn you about the uh, certificate that signs the jars. Just go ahead and accept the signed jars the way that they are. Uh, and the application will run. So you can see the shelf server interface such that it is. There really isn't a whole lot to it. Um, there's a couple of things here worth noting. Down in the bottom, there's a network port number. Uh, I have this set to a manual number. Most people should just leave it at, at automatic, although if you're trying to go through a router or firewall or something like that, it may be easier to set that. I also have a password set here, absolute maximum security, as you can see. Uh, your other option is to run the server publicly. It won't prompt for a password. Of course, I'll caution you one more time that books are usually copyrighted, and if you're running a public server, you may indeed be violating copyright in the process of doing that. So please be conscious of what you're sharing and uh, make sure you're within the law. And then the last thing you can see here is a listing of all the book, the book directories that I have shared. Now, if you want to add a new directory, there won't be any listed here initially, just hit the Add Directory button, and then you can scroll around until you find something you want to share. Uh, what will I go with? Oh, iPhone. Yeah. Now, you'll see over on the side here, there's a name entry, which you can type whatever you want. It defaults to the name of the directory, and if that's what you want, that's fine. If you'd rather give a more descriptive name for what's in that directory, you can type it there. Now you'll also notice that I selected a directory. I don't want to double click to go into it. If I did that, I've gone one level too far. So I actually want to stay up a level, just single click the directory, type in the name that I want, and then type the tap, click, there we go, the add directory button. And you can see now that test directory shows up here. And if I were running my iPhone side of things, you'd be able to see there's a new test directory listed there. And of course, you can remove a directory as well. Whenever you make changes, go ahead and click the Apply Settings button. Uh, all of this stuff is saved to a configuration file. Um, and as soon as you tap the Apply Settings button, it is available and visible to your iPhone. And that's about all there is, really. You can minimize this window and leave it running if you want. Uh, if you're kind of an advanced user, uh, I'd invite you actually to take a look at the website on the events tab here, which you can just barely see in this silly window here. Um, and there you'll find some instructions on how to leave a shelf server running on a server all the time if you want to do that, uh, how to tunnel it through firewalls and all those other good kind of things. So that's about it. If you do have any problems with this, uh, definitely feel free to email me. The most common problem, honestly, is a firewall is on. Uh, if you have Mac OS X, you can look in system preferences and you can temporarily disable your firewall. Windows will have something similar. You may also have problems with your Wi-Fi router or firewall or something between 
your iPhone and your computer getting in the way. So you just want to double check on those. And that's about it. Thank you.